Okay, we're back inside of the first Ascendant. Just as we get towards the final technical test before full game launch, we've got a week left before we manage to get our hands back on the game and see what they've been doing for the last two years. This is going to be absolutely huge, and they've started ramping up their marketing for this, so we've got so much more information now than what we had this time last week. So we're going to dive into everything that you guys need to know about the final technical test, changes made, and alterations inside of the game before we can dive in. If you haven't already, smash that beautiful blue thumbs up and subscribe if post notifications turned on it'd be greatly appreciated on top of that check out our sponsor gamer subs the leader in gaming energy and nutrition that offers gamers and esports athletes a healthier energy choice helping them to perform to their highest potential gg is keto friendly less than one calorie and completely sugar free comes in an array of flavors of which my favorite so far is lean if you guys want to check that out link in the description use code cloudplays at checkout to get you a cheeky discount that being said let's see what's going on with the first descendant so like we stated their marketing schemes have started ramping up and we've started seeing some all new changes that they've been making inside of the game which is absolutely huge considering that we have been pretty much radio silent now for two years when we start looking at what it is that they've got going they posted up a tweet just yesterday stating the teleport preview which is currently a work in progress where you can travel around fields with the special teleport gives a new feel and a new look to the descendants as an overall and this should be something that will move quite well we've seen this quite a lot in games such as destiny 2 and stuff like that you were able to purchase these in the microtransaction store inside of eververse and now we've got this sort of concept going through for the first descendant it looks pretty damn cool and as far as graphical imagery goes it looks absolutely incredible they've given us a massive post right here as we can see which is the info about the final technical test around 13 new characters we have obviously got new content as far as end game activities encrypted vaults vulgus recon outposts loads of things inside of the two new fields we've got kingston and we've got the sterile lands and end game support including 40 plus modules 50 million gold and 4.5 million cupia shards so you guys are going to pretty much be able to have access to absolutely everything but they give you guys a detailed breakdown of what it is that we're going to be experiencing when the game actually launches into the final technical test and this is the basic information as far as it goes in pdt may 25th 2024 at exactly midnight through till may 26th 2024 which is obviously a sunday running at the through to milled night as well this will obviously refer to the image below you guys can see the final technical test which will obviously utilize into the time periods that we've got right here for those of you guys in london like myself we've got the start of may 25th at 8 a.m bst and it's going to be ending at 8 a.m bst on the may 27th which gives us a decent 48 hours to be able to run through this now as far as the supported platforms go this is only going to be on steam now please note that this test is so Solely on the PC platform for technical verification purposes. Obviously, it means that they're quite confident with the main console ports, and this should end up being quite good. Hopefully, we manage to get some decent frames out of this, and it doesn't cause any sort of like big crash ports or anything like that. It'll be interesting to see where it is that they're at with the console ports, so but for right now, it's only on Steam. As far as supported languages, they've got 12 total supported languages, and as far as voice languages go, they've got two running with Korean korean and english and how do you participate it states right here that the test is open test available for anyone to play via the steam platform during the test period again we'll leave the link down in the description for you guys so you guys can actually get involved with it come the final technical test usage pre-download instructions are that the pre-download is available one day before the test actually starts and this will schedule for the may 24th at midnight pdt so you guys are going to be able to jump on straight in for that one it's going to be very very interesting and as far as pc requirements you can see right here that we are getting some decent support for this now as far as the requirements go you can see on screen here via this piece that we need roughly around an intel i5 3570 with an amd fx 8350 one of the two will do eight gigabytes of ram with a gtx 1050 ti or the radeon rx 560 
70 with a video memory of 4 gigabytes. The version for this one in the DirectX is going to be version 12 and as far as storage goes you need around 50 gigabytes available space since the installment in SSD is definitely recommended. Now these aren't massive massive requirements you guys should be able to run this quite easily on most devices but as far as technical issues go the Intel CPU issues that crashes have been reported on some of the Intel 13th and 14th generation CPUs. Now some PCs using the CPUs experience a forced shutdown of the game with the error message out of video memory upon game launch. This can be partially resolved by setting power limits in the BIOS and this issue has been reported to Intel. As far as the in-game support information though during the test period we will provide caliber currency and modules to support smooth testing to allow you to experience newly added in-game store items. Detailed in-game support details will be provided in the separate notice and the content is absolutely incredible. Now as far as you guys who have already played the game you'll obviously know quite a lot about it but as far as the weapon readjustments there is a weapon readjustment that there is a feature that changes weapons options for rare and above to efficiently match the descendants preferences. As you can see right here the weapon readjustments are available after achieving mastery rank 4 and can be conducted at the workbench in Albion and each zone camp. As we can see on screen there is obviously a specific workbench location that you guys will be able to visit and when into the weapon readjustment screen you'll see this right here this is absolutely amazing that we're going to be able to alter the attributes as far as how the weapons work and what it is that they're going to be able to utilize so you can play it to the best of your abilities void fragments are newly added field content placed throughout each zone now each void fragment has an attribute indicated and they can only be destroyed using descendant skills that match their attribute firearm attacks do not deal any damage now, if a void fragment is already being engaged by another descendant, you can join the quest by entering the area around the void fragment. However, if you do not use a descendant with the matching attribute, you will only receive the basic reward and not the conditional rewards. Now, while you're progressing with the void fragments, you can obtain various types of void shards, which can be used in the void fusion reactor. Now, we can see right here that a void fragment will obviously say non-attribute descendants only. This is a big one the rewards for the attribute information for void fragment in each region can be checked by going to the world map selecting the desired zone and hovering over the void fragment icon for example the void fragments marked as non-attribute can only be attacked by non-attribute descendant skills very very big usage is absolutely insane now what we're actually seeing through this part next bit right here we can see that we're using the void fusion reactors and we'll get into that in a second what you guys need to look at is how they have altered the map now the map looks 10 times better it was really really flimsy it was a little bit difficult to read and wasn't really too enjoyable to look at whereas right now it looks absolutely incredible and the coloration on this just looks nutty i cannot wait to see what they've done with regards to the sizing of this map but going back into void fusion reactors the void fusion reactor newly added field content along with the void fragments is placed throughout each zone now each void fusion reactor indicates the type of quality of void shards needed and you can summon monsters by meeting these requirements when defeating the summon monsters if you poses all the required void shards you will also receive additional rewards and the void shards will be automatically consumed descendants who do not possess void shards can still help defeat the monsters near the void fusion reactor to receive basic rewards now the reward and required types of quantities of fragments for each void fusion reactor can be checked by going to the world map select the desired zone and hovering over the void fusion reactor icon which is where you'll see this on screen right here there is so much to go through through this game it's going to be absolutely insane but during the test period they'll have various events and ways for you your descendants to give feedback make suggestions and report bugs they'll provide more details in a separate announcement coming soon but it's just looking so damn enjoyable they've made even such little tweaks that make such big effects this right here is the new lobby reveal where you're obviously going to be able to play bunny during the final techno test and you can meet her in the new lobby screen which looks at 10 times better for me personally i much prefer this one but they're going to be leaning massively into the main customization of characterization because their most recent posts have both been about how glay will look with certain eye makeup or even certain lip color 
colors and utilizing certain armor sets and or costumes so this is going to be a massive leaning point as far as how this game works the customization is going to be the biggest key feature and you guys are going to be able to ramp up to some absolutely crazy looking first descendants as you move your way through the game i'm so damn excited for this title and i have been now for years let me know what you guys are thinking via the comment section below thank you so much again for watching guys appreciate your faces like subscribe and as always i'll see you in the clouds